So stories. <clears throat> Share the fears, the challenges, and the joys. Share your journey. Don't let great stories get past you. <clears throat> the congregation needs to hear what God's doing. Often a lot of good stuff's happening. We don't have time on Sunday. We don't do that on Sunday morning. Well, I'll start doing it. And take the risk. Some churches have canned testimonies that are prepared. I never did. I always walked out in the audience, talked to people about it, took the risk, and everybody knows it's a risk. And you know what? The level of energy in the room and excitement, when you're just going out to talk to somebody about it, you don't know what's going to happen, and they don't know what's going to happen. But I'll tell you what, those are the moments of high energy in a service and where the Spirit of God works in amazing ways. And I'd find some excuse to go to Pismo to ride my bike or something. But it always kept coming back to me that I needed to be here because this is what I needed. And um, it was like when we'd sing the songs, that's when, that's when the message would really hit me that I needed to pay attention. So then I'd listen to your messages and they started making me a lot happier. Started making my life better. Have you really opened your life and made a commitment to Christ yet? Yeah, I did. Uh, how did this, who wants to start? Go ahead. Go ahead. What do you need to know? <laughs> how did, uh, did you grow up with any kind of faith in God? I did, yes. I did until I was a teenager and decided to do it myself. And pretty much walked away and met Eric and was on my own and he brought me back March 10th. With and you, uh, you were, uh, grew up with much religious background? No, none at all. That was a mess. Just a Joe Pig. <laughs> that's why, that's why, yeah, that's why when she met me, she kind of went her own way also. And, and uh, so where did it all start? What, what was the, how did God plant the seed for you guys to come to faith? Well, she, I knew that she had, she had been wanting to come back to him for a long time, and she knew the only way that one of the pastors here at one of the church could marry us, could marry us is if we went to uh, the marital prep classes. And so we started going, and that first night is when I committed my life to Christ. Where were you when you made that commitment? Did you do it here in church or someplace else? or In court. <laughs> I know it sounds really... Okay, that's a new one. Write that down in court. Okay. Linda, when was it that you first made your commitment to Christ or that you made your commitment to Christ? Mm, first about eight years ago, but then back in November. November, just two months ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, where did that happen? How did that happen? Well, I was up there. <laughs> Things were just so bad, there was just no other way to go except maybe start all over again and come to know him all over again and maybe do it better this time. So you ask Christ to come into your life. Again. again. Standing in the balcony. Yes. And is he there? Absolutely. Is he changing you? Tremendously. You look like you really mean it. Who helped you? <laughs> My dearest friends are Jana and Steve Macbeth, and who first brought me to this church back in September of 95, shortly after I moved from Boston. Jan and Steve, are you here? Stand up, you guys. That's it. Go give them a hug and an apple pen, will you please? Praise God for you. I want to believe this year that I'll be conscious of the fact that I'm here on earth to be an influence in bringing others to faith in you. Thank you for the incredible honor of being your fruit tree. Fruit trees don't fret, folks. They don't stew. They don't say, oh, I hope I have some apples next year. If they're well-rooted in getting the right nourishment and the sun, the radiance of the sun is shining on them, they just produce fruit.